Can you hear me? All right, can you hear me? It seems like it's working. Okay. It's, it's green. It's yeah. So it's probably just not loading. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this talk on QGIS. I'm going to do something kind of ambitious, which is to go through an entire real world workflow using QGIS. And I'm going to talk some about cartography, since that's what I'm all about, um, along the way, and a little bit about analysis. And the main goal is just to give you a flavor of QGIS for anybody who's never used it before, although there's a couple of more advanced techniques thrown in there as well. So don't worry about like writing down every step or anything like that, because this will all be online. Um, I'm actually going to present this at a map time in Boulder next month. And everyone's going to work through it as a tutorial. And after that, then I'm going to post it online. So it'll be like a tutorial that anybody can use. So don't worry about you know, keeping track of the details. Just kind of an, get an idea of what QGIS can do. Um, I started using QGIS about a year ago. And before that, I was a strict ArcMap user for cartography. And it's come so far in the last year. Um, it used to be fairly buggy for the things that I used it for. And now I don't encounter those bugs um, very much at all anymore. So I really feel confident about recommending it as a tool to use for desktop GIS. Um, not only that, but it's cross-platform, so you have that going for you. And um, it's been in development, I guess, since 2002, so it has a long history. And looks like it's going to be something that's going to be supported for a while. They just came out with the long-term release concept a week ago with the 2.8, QGIS 2.8 release. And with the long-term release concept, I guess they are hoping to be able to support this version, 2.8, for an entire year. Uh, whereas before, they were having a new version every four months. I think they're still going to do that, but they're going to go ahead and support 2.8 for the whole year. And that helps some organizations that aren't sure about having to update every four months. Um, how many people in here already use QGIS? Oh my gosh. OK, so hopefully this isn't too beginner for you. Um, but there's always parts of the program that maybe you might not have explored um, yourself. So. Um, who has not even installed QGIS and just wants to know what it's all about? OK, so we still have some, some of those folks, too. Um, so <laughs> the structure of this talk is a little strange. Um, it's titled How to Win Friends and Use QGIS, which is really a riff off of this old 1930s book. It's like the, the seminal uh, self-help book called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's actually a good book, but I'm kind of riffing off of that. That's my structure for the whole talk. I'll take quotes from his book and change them into quotes that, that I might say. Um, so the first part of the tutorial is adding data to QGIS. Okay? So, Dale Carnegie, starting with a quote from him, said that dealing with people is probably the biggest problem that you'll face. However, I say finding data is probably the biggest problem that you face if you do any kind of GIS analysis or cartography or really any kind of work at all in the spatial field. Um, I hate these sort of looking at maps and trying to find data. You either get 200 results or you get zero results. Um, so thankfully for this tutorial, I've already found all the data for you. We're going to use GeoFabrique to get shapefile zips of OSM data, um, Census UK data service. So we're actually going to make a pub map today uh, in the London Square Mile, which is a part of London that was like the old part of London. Um, and so that's, what, that's why we're going to get a lot of things from Open Data UK websites. So Ordnance Survey. And then also, I had to create my own data set for this tutorial. Um, so it's up on GitHub. And it's just a set of 10 GeoJSON points of historic pubs in that square mile. I'm hoping it can grow if anybody wants to add other historic pubs anywhere in the world to it. You're welcome to. That would be great, actually. Um, so the first part of the demo, let's just get started. It's adding data to QGIS. Um, whoops, OK. So this is going to be, we're going to start with a blank QGIS screen. Um, I heard this, overheard this thing by Brian Timoney and James Fee, this exchange a few weeks ago, where Brian Timoney said, 
in the toolbar wars between ArcGIS and QGIS, QGIS might win. So there's a lot of toolbars in QGIS, but I don't mind them. I don't mind the button pushing myself, and that's what we're going to do a lot of during the tutorial. Um, we're just going to take those four data sets that I talked about and bring them in. There's lots of ways to bring data into QGIS, but the easiest way for me is to drag and drop the SHPs. So we have three shapefile points and one GeoJSON. QGIS can read GeoJSON files, um, but it can't edit them. Okay, we only want to read it anyway, so that's fine. So we're going to bring in the data. QGIS works pretty darn quickly for rendering. It'll work a lot quicker than ArcMap for rendering. So let's zoom in to the um, historic pubs just by right-clicking and going to zoom to layer. And bring this down to the bottom. Okay, so it doesn't look very good, but that's how we brought in our data. Um, there's a couple little, there's a demo of um, manipulating the data, so I just want to show you how that's done. If I turn off the buildings and I zoom out a little bit, if anyone's familiar with the London um, area, this right here is actually the old part of London that they call the square mile. And so I see that it's made up of many different wards in my ward data set. And I just want to merge those together, right? So um, something that we often do in GIS. So if I look at the attribute table, I see that most of the wards that I want to merge together start with 00AA. In fact, all of them do. So I'm going to use an expression to select them all. And in the expression box, it's pretty easy to figure out. You just have your fields and values from your table, and you choose what you want. So I want old code. And I want to use something like AA00 um, percent sign for the wildcard. And that should work if I did everything right. So let's press. Ah, zero. Thank you. 00AA. Zero, zero, OK. All right. Oh, yeah, it tells you output preview one. So press select, and all of those wards that I want to merge together are selected. Um, so from there, I'm just going to edit the table using this little edit button. So that's how you edit anything in QGIS. Is by, um, that's how you enable all the editing tools. And they're basically all the editing tools you're familiar with with any GIS. Um, and I'm going to go up to the Edit menu and do Merge Features merge selected features. And we're just going to take, you know, you can merge the attributes with different rules and things, but we just care about the geometry. So we're just going to click OK. And you see they're all merged there. And then I just want to export that one shape for um, our bounding box, basically, for the map. So I'm going to use, um, OK, let me just stop clicking things. Somehow. It's not showing all on the screen. <laughs> so, oh, it's not interesting. Huh. OK, so um, anyway, what we want to do is select this and make it into its own thing. But I don't seem to have the toolbar, and I'm not going to figure it out right now. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to um, just use a file that I already have, which is um, square mile. So normally, you would just highlight that and then export it. You would do a right click, save as, export the um, highlighted feature. And so I just don't have my toolbar showing right now. Escape. Why is it giving me that? I'm like drawing polygons. There we go. Oh, OK. So it allowed me to select it that way. Um, so anyway, we have our square mile polygon, which is what we want for this map. And the next thing to do, um, then if I go back to my slides, is add some color to the map. And so that's what we're going to talk about here. Um, and Dale Carnegie said a simple way to make a good impression is to have good posture and neat appearance. And I think that a simple way to make a good impression is to have good colors. It's kind of what you think everyone sees first when you look at a map. But it's remarkably hard to do because everybody has an argument when it comes to colors. Right, And um, so the dress was a perfect example for that. Um, so hopefully you'll like the colors on the map today, but I guarantee you some of you will hate them just because that's the way it, it goes. So let's color some of these things here. I'm going to get rid of this one. OK. So to, okay. So to do anything symbology related, you're going to use the Layer Properties dialog, which is a double click of the, of the layer. 
And then you can see you can work with it here, put in pattern fills or just simple color fills. Um, for this one, we're going to just give it a color that um, with the choose color. And it has so many options in QGIS. I feel like um, you can really do a lot if you're a designer. Um, in fact, I don't know. I haven't seen ArcMap in a little while. But I feel like um, there are more options in QGIS than there are in ArcMap, especially when it comes to putting pattern fills and using SVGs and things like that. Um, we're also going to color the buildings the same way. And I'm just going to put an RGB in there. OK. And then the only reason I have this DLUA region data set here is so that I can get the Thames River as a polygon. And this happens a lot when you're working with maps is you don't have exactly the right thing that you want, but it, it kind of works for what we need here. So we're just going to actually fake this and use project properties and set the background color um, to something for the Thames River. So that's going to be 8748112. Okay. Great, so we have that, and we still have kind of our um, ugly square mile there, but we do have some buildings, which looks good. And it is highlighted, which we don't want, so we'll just use that button. Okay, so that's just, that's as simple as it is for colors, and there's like a color picker tool with a little eyedropper and all kinds of ways to work with colors there. All right, so the next thing is to work on icons, and Dale Carnegie said, other people will like you instantly if you always make them feel important, which is kind of true. But I think that other people will like you instantly if you make pub maps. So that's why <laughs> we're pub mapping today. Um, this is the Cheshire Cheese, which I actually went to last year. It was a really, really cool old bar from the 1500s in London. And I had the greatest like mushroom risotto there. And then for dessert, the guy came up and said that they were serving fried Twinkies. And I, I just, I don't know. I thought it was like the French Laundry meets Dairy Queen or something. It was interesting, but I really liked the pub. Um, OK, so I was talking to a British friend, and he mentioned that darts are kind of synonymous with pubs in England. And so he thought we should use a dart icon. And indeed, when I went to the nounproject.com, which is a great place to get icons, by the way, I pay $10 a month to get the icons without attribution. But you can get them for free if you don't mind attributing um, who created those icons. So I went to the nounproject.com and put in pub. And indeed, there was like a dart there as one of the options. So I chose that and downloaded it as an SVG. So that's what we're going to use for our demo for the icons. So I'm going to go back to historic pubs. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to use um, an SVG marker. And then I'm going to give it the file. Um, I'm going to go to my demo 6. So Dart. And if I make this bigger so that you can see it, um, you can see that it's black. And I actually don't want it to be black because that's not going to show up on my really dark matte background. So let's say I want to change it to white. So you see how I changed the color fill, but it didn't actually change the marker to white. And so there's a little bit of a trick to making your SVGs usable in QGIS so that you can change colors. I think it's a lot better to be able to change colors on the map than to have to hard code it into your SVG file. So I'm actually going to cancel this. And then I'm going to go in and open that Dart file um, in my Demo 6 folder. Here's my Dart file. I'm going to make a copy of it and then uh, paste it. And then just open it with a text editor. And then this bit where it goes, um, there's a path tag in here. So this is a little more advanced. There's all these numbers. OK, so here it just says path fill, and then it's a hard-coded fill. We want to actually replace that. And this will all be in the tutorial online. Um, so we're going to replace it with this language here, which is a parameter language, so that you can change the colors dynamically. So I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to replace this bit here, press Save. And then I'm going to go back in and use that file as my SVG marker. 
instead of the original one. So I'm going to use my dark copy and make it large so we can see. And then, um, actually, it changed it to white because I hard coded it to white. But you can see here that I can change it to any color now that I added that text. But I want it to be white with a black outline. And then I think what would be nice would be if we um, had it actually point to the point. So if we change some of these things, let's see, 9. All right, so that should probably make it point to the x where the actual pub is located. Um, I think that's it. Let's press OK. And if we turn, turn off the square mile, so there they are, rather large. But um, yeah, so those are the 10 pub points um, symbolized with icons. Not too hard to do. Um, let's label them now. So let me go back to my little thing. Labels. OK. So Dale Carnegie said a sure, it was kind of fun finding these things in this old book. A sure way of making enemies is to tell someone they're wrong, which makes sense. Um, and I think a surefire way of making enemies is to make these huge label halos. <laughs> Um, so we'll try to avoid that. I am actually going to use a little outline, but just make it really small and subtle. Um, so let's do some labels. All right, so we just want to label them with the name of the pub and the year that the pub um, you know, uh, came into being. So you double click it again, and that gets you into the layer properties dialog. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can fool with here. So you can see labels is in the list. Um, so if I click on that and I want to label it with more than just one of the attributes in the table. So here's my attributes in the table. I could just label it with a name. Fine. It'll do that for me, and I click OK. Um, but we want to use an expression to make it a little um, fancier. And so we're going to use the name. Oh, that was already there. And then concatenate with some pipes and do a space and the year established. And then it should tell you a preview here. If it's not actually um, an expression that works, then it gives you an error. Um, but here we see Lamb, Lamb Tavern 1780, so we know that that works. So let's press OK. And we can apply it, but it's just going to be black text that you can't see very well. So let's change that. You know what? I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn these off. OK. So now you can see what we're actually doing. Um, OK, so with labels, we're going to change a bunch of stuff. Um, I have this sort of favorite font I've been using lately called Yanon Coffee Sots. Or pfft, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's a free font, and it looks really cool. Um, and then we'll make these larger, like maybe 14. And we'll make our labels white. And um, so there's all these options. I really love this. You can, if I was just going to press Apply, that's the way it's going to look. Um, but I want to have it wrapped. So let's wrap it on a space and make the alignment centered. And then how's that going to look? So that looks like that. And then I want to put them at the bottom of the points. Um, so let's do placement, offset from point, put them at the bottom. See how that looks. OK, that looks good. And then let's do put a small buffer. Um, and the trick with buffers in cartography, really, is to have the buffer for your text match the background of your map, OK? So that way, it's not going to look garish. Um, so we're going to just take that. This is the same dialog that QGIS has for every color chooser. And so you can see I can use pick color. And it can you see that? It's, a, it's an eyedropper. And then I'm going to pick the color from the background of my map. And that puts that in there. And apply. So I've got a little thin line, and that really helps the text stand out a lot. And I think everything else looks good. So let's press OK. So there's our labels. They don't all show up right now, um, but when it's zoomed in and when we print out, it's going to show up. Um, OK, so next up is what's called the inverted shape burst. This is what's going to make it look really cool. Um, Dale Carnegie said that an easy way to become a good conversationalist is to be an interested listener. Okay, so that makes sense. 
Um, but I say an easy way to become a good conversationalist is to explain the intricacies of the inverted polygon shapers fill, right? <laughs> Uh, my daughter helped me pick out this picture. She was really great. Um, I just had some regal cat standing there. And she said, no, no, let's Google nerdy cats. <laughs> so we Googled nerdy cats, and we found this. And so thanks to her, that's what we were looking at. All right, so inverted shape burst is just this cool little trick that I love. It makes your maps look great. So this is going to be the square mile, which I actually think I want to have up here above the buildings. OK, so we're going to symbolize the square mile now um, style. And then we're going to use this inverted polygons, which used to be really hard to do in a desktop GIS if you wanted to actually symbolize what was outside of the polygon instead of what was inside. Um, that was difficult to do. But um, they have this inverted polygons thing in QGIS, which is great for that. So we're going to do that, but then we're going to do a second little trick, which is to use a shape burst fill on the inverted polygon. And you'll see what it means in a minute. Um, it's basically a buffer fill. And so we're not buffering the square mile, we're buffering outside the square mile. And we're going to start with a white color and go to transparent. OK, that looks good. So if I click OK and then I turn it on, Ta-da! So that really makes it look a lot better. <laughs> um, OK, cool. That was that. That was that whole demo there. Um, last but not least is the print composer. So in QGIS, you could print straight from here. But if you want to add all of your nice little cartographic touches, then you need to use the print composer. And we're going to do that here just by going to Project, New Print Composer. And it asks you for a name, which is a little bit of a pain. I'm just going to click OK, and it will give me Composer 1 for the name. And here you have a blank page. Um, QGIS is more of a um, sort of European or universal project, so it does not load up with a letter-sized page, just to warn you, because it will drive you crazy if you export and it's not quite right. Um, on your printer. So if you're in the US and you want to use a letter size page, then you go to the composition tab and you change the presets to ANSI A. And that will get you to that. Um, and then basically the way this print composer works is every element that you have on the page has its own little tabby things over on the other side that you can change. So it's a lot like Photoshop or Inkscape, which makes it really nice from a designer's perspective. You don't have to right click everything. All your tools are right here on this side. Um, so I actually like that feature. And I want to change the page background. So I'm going to use that little color dropper again. because I want the background to be the same as the color Let's see, pick color. I'm just going to pick it from back over here. I mean, there's other ways, right? Because it's probably in my list of recently used colors as well. Um, but just so I can be sure that it's the right one, I'm going to do that. So there I've got a background. There's also um, snapping tools and all of the things that you're used to using if you're going to use it if you're a designer, um, which does, we're just not going to get into right now. Um, but I will eyeball it. So. Um, not recommended to eyeball it, but that's what we'll do for the demo. Add new map is how you add your map to the page. Um, so we'll just eyeball it like this. And there it is. Um, one thing that's a little bit strange that you have to get used to is if you go back, let's say I'm like, well, I want to um, zoom in, right? Because I want to have this highlighted more. So I go over to my main map and I zoom in like that, and then I go back to my print composer, and hey, it didn't change at all. And so this took me a while to figure out the first time around. Um, there's an update preview here, but for setting the map extent, you need to press this button after you've changed it over in your regular map view. So um, anyway, I, don't, I wish it would just, some people don't want it to change as they're flowing around with the main map. Um, so that's why that's there. OK. So let's just add in a couple of finishing touches here, uh, just to show you the power of what the Print Composer can do. Um, so I'm going to add in a text item for like the name. Um, let's call it Ye Old Pubs. And I'm going to use my favorite font again, Yanon. And we'll make it huge, like 70 
point and use a white and then expand it. Okay, so that's a good title. Um, as you scroll down, you can see all the different things that you can change with the labels. I'm going to change the rotation to um, not, sh I think, 330 or 320, nah, 335. Okay, so that kind of matches the rotation of my map. And then um, the other great thing is that you can copy and paste and just keep working on your label like this and then copy and paste. We're going to a couple more of these. I want people to know that it's the square mile of London because that's a little bit different from what we typically think of. Um, if you're going to change the size of a font that's on a label, on a title, um, make sure it's very much different from the sizes you're working on. Um, so see, I've got 70 for ye old pubs, London, uh, ye old pubs, Londons, and then 30 for square mile. And then this will make a lot more sense if I add an of here. Okay. So that's the title. Ye old pubs of London square mile. Okay. So that's pretty easy. Um, I found the alignment to be a little bit hard to use last time. Um, you know, you can align center and do all these different things, but if I wanted to add a lot of icons to um, this, I did have some trouble with that, and I haven't actually looked into that for 2.8, so I'm not sure how that works on 2.8. Um, and then we're just going to add in a little bit of fine print down at the bottom, because you should always have all of your metadata. So this is the small print I have. Um, you should always have where you got your data, and who made it is a tough deism um, that you should always have your name on whatever you make so that somebody can yell at you if you did the wrong thing, I think was what Tufty was thinking. Um, it, he probably wanted to yell at a lot of people. Um, <laughs> so now he can yell at me. So my name's on there. Okay, so. That's basically it. That's a map. So we just made an entire map from start to finish, from bringing in the data to putting it um, on there. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more capabilities that QGIS has for analysis. I mean, it has all of the Sextante tools that Olaya, Victor Olaya put together. So there's tons of analytical capabilities in there. Um, and then, of course, you can export to WMS and make your digital maps um, in various ways. Uh, integrated with OpenGeo Suite, for example, um, output to SLD. I mean, there's just all kinds of things in there. And there's actually a lot of opportunity to be involved in the, pro the QGIS project as well. Um, I'm sure that they need people for documentation, for example. Um, if anybody wants to help out with the project, that would probably be helpful. Um, I forgot to give you my last Dale Carnegie quote. <laughs> so, um, the sa which is the safety valve in handling complaints is to let others talk. And I was going to say the safety valve in handling complaints is to adequately title the map and make your metadata um, small. Okay, and so that was what I was just working on. This was an actual map that was online. Um, it's since been taken off, but the slop map of LA County I thought was just really interesting. Um, so. I want to just give a shout out to the QGIS project contributors and all the donors. I looked at the donor list lately, recently when the 2.8 release was um, put out, and it's just a huge long list of donors who have donated financially to the project, and they make it really easy to do that. Um, I'm not actually a contributor or a donor, um, but I'm hoping to maybe get more involved in it in the years to come. So. Thank you, and um, I'll take any questions that you have. Okay. Could you kind of, could you, is there any way to easily randomly tilt them? I'm sure I could tilt them all in the same direction. Mm -hmm. 
That's a great question. I don't know if there's a way to randomize, but what you might do is if you had few enough points, and there's only 10 here, you could have an attribute field with an angle, so 270, 330, whatever you want, and then have it render on that attribute field the angle. So, um, And actually, I forgot to say that I have a bunch of these maps printed out for if you want to pick one up afterward. Um, I'll just leave them out. Are there any other questions? Yes. The uh, raster, like drawing on the hills and stuff, that was really difficult to do. Like, before it was kind of hard to find a place where you could control the raster data types or the topography and that was really challenging as well. That's a great question. I don't know. Sorry. Okay, thank you very much.